Mm. I have a tradition. Every I close every campaign, no matter what campaign, going into the projects and going down the east side. And uh, hey, Joe, well, how you know? You know, they were, well, just because they're my friends, let them know I'm still there. We can't do that now. Not because of the black community, because it's too dangerous for me to be out walking on a company. <laughs> All right, y'all. So Joe Biden did this interview. It's a sit down interview with Ed Gordon, an exclusive interview with BET. Um, I'm not going to lie. We're not watching the whole thing, but there is a section that I want to show you that really gave me much side eye. Um, one thing that I really don't like in this concept of just voting in general, all black people don't vote the same. All black people do not vote the same. And I think as of lately, there's this mindset that black people owe Joe Biden something. We don't owe you nothing. We don't owe Joe Biden anything. I'm so tired of people putting Joe Biden and Donald Trump on a pedestal as if they're Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. They are not Jesus. Joe Biden and Donald Trump cannot save us. Jesus saves us. So this concept of worshiping and idolizing them, trying to look at them to take us out of our situation or predicament, whoever you may be, stop. Stop. Stop idolizing these people. I know we're, we're starting off a little bit strong. Consistent, continual concept of just gaslighting people to vote for Biden. I'm just like, yo. I don't get it. I don't get it. But we're going to watch this. Um, this is like, it's a segment I want to watch. I want y'all to see. I'm not going to say too much. We're just going to watch it. And then we're going to talk about it because I was perplexed when I seen this in the black community. It's the same community. By the way, one of the guys that when I was a lifeguard back then is, uh, and I helped represent as a young public defender, is out here now, he's a major labor leader. Um, these are, they're, they're, they're my friends, they're still my friends. And they're still the ones that encourage me to move. And so I think that, and one thing does change, is it's not an excuse and explanation. I would ordinarily be going through black neighborhoods on crown on the foot, working through the neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. I have a tradition. Every I close every campaign, no matter what campaign, going into the projects and going down the east side. And uh, hey, Joe, well, how you know? You know, they would, well, just because they're my friends, let them know I'm still there. We can't do that now. Not because of the black community, because it's too dangerous for me to be out walking on a company. So. What I'm doing now is trying to keep in touch. Okay, so I have a problem with that. I have a problem with that. Um, you're probably thinking Uruk is not that deep. Uh, I have a problem with that. One, this concept of just, you know, I close on my campaigns and the projects, you know, just walking through as if like the projects is like some museum or something. Like that's people living. And then why are we equating projects with black people's living conditions like not all black people i know he didn't say this but it's like almost like this um insinuation all black people aren't in the projects there's a lot of people of color disproportionately in the projects depending on where we're talking about but it's like i don't know that just rubs me off and bt bt needs to do better bt needs to do better let's continue real quick there's many of my black constituents and letting people know that I'm available. I'm available. I really, that's the reason why I got involved but in that's the, problem. in the first place. Not a joke. That's the problem. He's available, but, and it's not only him. These politicians are available when election time comes, election season comes. It's like, where is the access of availability prior to election season? That's the issue we're not talking about. Those are the questions that needs to be answered. Not a joke. Everybody deserves a shot. Everybody deserves a shot. And we've demonstrated, you give them a shot, they step up. They step up in every community. That's why the black community is doing as well as it is now. And it's going to do better. See? We've got to focus on making sure that this MAGA 25. Do y'all not? Okay. Are y'all picking up what I'm putting down? Like, I think this is a conversation, and I spoke about this in my previous video, that this is a conversation that we don't talk about enough within the left, specifically that comes the words that come out of the mouths of white liberals, white people that are Democrats, specifically like progressives too. It's almost like y'all speak about us like 
we're just like some experiment or like a liability or like we're you're doing us a favor this concept of we need to give them a chance and this and the third like all they need a chance and they rose up to the to the challenge it's like bro we're not kids we're not kids we're humans we're people first i just don't i just well, I, that was the key point that i wanted to show you because it makes me it made me uncomfortable and i want to know if i'm tripping or if i'm just being dramatic or sensitive y'all comment down below i already know i'm not tripping because words you got to know how to like read between the lines like read between the lines the all the trump has out there does not succeed they mm -hmm. want to wipe it all out look what's happening all the folks in the black community have prescription drug problems they're a lot of money you have diabetes you have you know you need insulin 400 bucks it's now 35 bucks the black community black in the, in the east side where i'm from where i what was you're in a situation where no black american no any american over the age of 65 <clears throat> will have to pay more than $2,000 a year for all the prescriptions for the entire year, including cancer drugs that are two, twelve, fifteen thousand bucks. And so it's about giving health care. It's about making sure there's opportunity for people to have a good education. I think we should be, I've been pushing and we're gonna get it done. Early education. You know, you know all the studies better than I as well as I do, that you come out of a neighborhood or a house where there's no books, where there's a dysfunctional family, where there's a problem, and you start off school, you hear a million fewer words haven't been spoken because you're not, there's not conversation. Well, guess what the studies show now? If you have three, four, and five-year-olds going to early education, not, not daycare, education, you increase by... Okay, Joe Biden's teeth looks really nice. Um... I'm confused why the interviewer isn't really challenging him and he didn't really challenging he didn't really challenge him in this segment which i'm like why and i'm also curious would they have a sit down with trump too like if trump were to i don't know if they reached out to trump and he declined or if they just never cared to reach out to him but i think they should have a sit down with trump i think not only Trump, but just Dr. Cornell West as well. Just just sit down with everybody on the ballot so that black people can actually choose and not be told who we should vote for. 56% their ability to go through 12 years of school and on the community college. And I'm going to make community college free. There's so many opportunities we have. I do and like I the, the idea of community to see college it. free. At least I hope so. That's something I Mr. always Mr. President, think. always good to speak with you. Hope you have me back. I really mean it. That'll be up to your folks. <laughs> That's up to me. You, you, <laughs> there you go. You call them. All they right. say no, call I'll me. I'll take you up on it. Good to see Thanks. you. He said, hopefully I'm back. I really need the votes. I need those votes. Stop playing. I wanted to show y'all that segment because it kind of rubbed me off the wrong way. Um, I just don't like this concept. And it's not only Biden's administration that does this. I think it's just something that's always been... In the nature of the democratic party specifically people who are white seeking the black vote or people of color or seeking the votes of people of color it's just this concept of just how they just speak to us like ah uh, it makes me so uncomfortable someone in the comments said as an american who is black i do not approve or disagree with this title or the message stop the bs black people we don't owe biden nothing vote what's right for you i agree I agree. Like, I just don't like this concept of just, <sighs> we don't owe this man nothing. We don't owe the party anything. Like, I don't think any of us, we have to get to the mindset to where they work for us. We don't work for them. They work for us. Somebody else said the fact that he gave all of our tax dollars to other countries while watching Americans struggle is crazy that anybody in their right mind would vote for him again. Ooh. If you don't vote for me, you ain't black. What a joke. Ooh. This is the BET comments, too. Oh, my gosh. 
This is just sad. Let this man live out the rest of his days without the weight of the world on his shoulders. Shame on his family. Bingo. That's it. That's the comment. That's the comment. I agree. I've been saying that too. I need to stop saying I've been saying that because yes, yeah, so I'm I just assume some of y'all watch my previous videos. Like I've been very critical of this. I just think the man needs rest. I think it's very, very selfish that people are just pushing him through the door. I personally honestly i don't even know if i want to blame the people around him anymore i want to blame joe biden because it seems like joe biden is the one that keeps saying he can go he can do it he can do it clearly not clearly not and it's almost hypocritical because the same people who are saying oh when trump is in office he won't leave he will never leave he's gonna become a dictator he's not gonna allow anybody else to um run for office after him he's gonna be in position of power forever until he he dies and whatever like that's kind of crazy to me because we're seeing a small scale of it now. Like the American people wanted a primary. We couldn't even get that. And the fact that Joe Biden gets to choose if he wants to continue or, or not when the vast majority of people are saying, hey, we want somebody else. Is that really democracy? Is that really democracy? Let me know your thoughts on the comments down below. What are your thoughts about this whole president Joe Biden sit down the black vote where do you think it's heading do you think Joe Biden is going to win like let me know your thoughts use it as a venting venting comment se section can barely even talk but don't be disrespectful with each other I don't like when people are rude let's have conversations without being rude okay I love you anyways this is Udo I connecting people with policy I love y'all all God bless y'all stay safe love y'all toodles oh,